It is also possible to have two-dimensional arrays in Java. A two-dimensional array is simply an array where each element of the array is another array. And you can think of it easier as having rows and columns, kind of like a spreadsheet, where each row is an array and each column is another array in that row. Declaring two-dimensional arrays requires two sets of brackets and two size declarators. And to iterate through it, you typically use nested for loops. Let's take a look at an example. In the class array 2D demo, let's create a regular one-dimensional array that looks like this. Int square bracket array equals new int 3. That is an array that holds th to three elements. So I could set array at index 0 to 5, array at index 1 to 10, and array at index 2 to 14. So now let's create a two-dimensional array that looks like this and check out the difference between the two-dimensional array and the one-dimensional array above. It's int and two empty sets of square brackets. We'll call this array 2 and set that to new int. Now you specify the number of rows. We could say it has three rows and four columns. And it's just like that. And then to set the data for each of the rows and columns, it looks like this. Array 2 at row 1, or actually at row 0, and column 0, we could set that to 5. And array 2 at still the first row, row 0, but column 1, we could set that to 10. And we can do things like that. And to make it easy, let's loop through a two-dimensional array and just initialize it to just some random number. I'm going to create a random number by saying random rand equals new random. That is a random number object. Let's import random from java.util by hovering the mouse over random and selecting import random from java.util. And now to loop through a two-dimensional array, it looks like this. For int i equals zero. Actually, instead of i, let's call it r for row. While the row is zero, while the row is less than array two dot length r plus plus. So now let's loop through all the columns for each of the rows. And to do that, you write a nested for loop that looks like this. For int c equals 0, c which stands for column. c is less than array 2. And be careful, this is not dot length. So array 2, and then in, at index r, dot length, which will give you the length of the array that is at that row. So the length of each column. Semicolon c++. Plus plus. And then here we will set every array element, array 2 at index r and c, the row and column specified, to rand dot next int, and we'll just make it a number between 0 and 99, so we'll stick 100 in there. So that is how we're going to populate our two-dimensional array, and we could also loop through it again just to print out the value. So we could print out a system that out that print line. array 2 at this row and this column. And it's not going to print out the way you would expect it to. It's kind of just prints it out all in a bunch of lines. And it doesn't look like a two-dimensional array table that we saw earlier. So what we could do is after every, so, well, first let's get rid of the ln and print line and add a blank space. So it prints it out on the same line and then after every time we're done printing every every column in that row let's print out a blank space like that run the program again and look at that three rows four columns and every number in there is just some random generated number using the random class every time I run it I get different numbers every time and that is basically a two-dimensional array it's very useful for collecting data that's rep usually represented as rows and columns.